Hey, Chris with RC Worst here. Welcome back to another video. Today we are just going to show you the basics of a frost-free hydrant. I know that there's a lot of you out there that are watching these videos that have frost-free hydrants and maybe you don't know how they work. Um, some one of those mystical things that happens that keeps these things from freezing. So we're just going to roll through. I've got a cool cutout that we got as a demo unit a while back and I figured it'd just be kind of cool to show what actually goes on inside these things so that you can understand them top to bottom. And obviously the more you know, the more money you're going to save because you're going to know what's going on and what things to look for when you're servicing your frost-free hydrants. One thing I want to point out uh, with frost-free hydrants is when you install them, you generally want to install them on a swing joint. And now if you don't know what a swing joint is, we're actually going to do a video on swing joints here really soon so stay tuned for that make sure you subscribe uh, so you get a notification the next time we do a video it's probably going to be a swing joint video the sun's really bright right now so let's jump right into checking this thing out we'll start down here at the bottom okay so the first thing we're going to focus on is this plug here so you notice that obviously your water comes up through this area and then uh, this plug is going to hold the water back so generally with these your frost free hydrant this section of it is below your frost line so depending on where you are in the world or country what have you you're going to have a different frost depth in some places you don't have a frost depth so you may not even know what this is but anyways here in north idaho generally ours is four feet three feet if you want to be risky um, so this plug here stops the water from going up past this point once you open this frost free as we open it here you can see that it opens this port which the water is then able to travel up this channel and up through the valve so when this is open obviously then the water is able to pass through it and kind of in interestingly enough is this is not a very big area so you're never going to get a crazy amount of volume through these unless you've just got crazy pressure on your system um, so probably not recommended for running a lot of sprinklers maybe just a couple but anyways that's beside the point so the interesting thing about the functionality of these is once we close it back down that port closes but then this port here this small area here allows the water that's in this channel to drain into the soil so this channel is what makes this a frost free hydrant you've got somewhere for that water level to drop and to prevent anything that's above this point from freezing so that's what makes these so unique and so useful in freezing environments so we'll open this once again here so you can see that we've got a rod here that travels up and down that controls that plug or that stopper um, this rod is sealed with a double o-ring and a compression fitting here so this just holds those o-rings in place and prevents water from being able to pass up through this section of the frost free hydrant this is probably one of the mo more prone areas for failure because these o-rings will get dried out because obviously in the summer this frost free hydrant sitting in the sun is going to get really hot so your o-rings are going to dry out crack out and the water is going to be able to slip past so it's not uncommon to have water coming out here and a, a simple maintenance that you can run on these to prolong the life of these o-rings is lubricating them every couple of years and then that's going to ensure that you don't have to find a rebuild kit to replace those o-rings because oftentimes if you've ever had to find a rebuild kit for a frost free hydrant you got to figure out what brand it is and then you got to buy the rebuild kit put the parts in when you can save a lot of time and effort by just pulling these out it's really easy to do and uh, lubricating them every now and again so that's kind of a pro tip for you so to speak one other thing that i'll point out with regard to these o-rings is if you do develop a small leak sometimes if you just tighten this compression fitting because those o-rings will flatten out with time you tighten that a little bit then you might be able to seal the leak that way if you can't seal the leak that way it's time to replace those o-rings they're shot so that's really all there is to frost free hydrants they're quite simple once you know the ins know the inside and outside of how they work um, so 
Hope you learned something in this video. Don't forget, once again, to like and subscribe. We appreciate those subscriptions, help our channel grow, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Forgot to mention, we do have some bonus content. When you're shopping for a frost-free hydrant, um, they're sold in by the berry depth. So you'll see four foot, five foot, six foot, et cetera, berry depth. So basically when you're trying to figure out uh, how far you want it to stick out of the ground, that's the number it's referring to. And typically the berry depth is the length that it says. So if it's a five foot berry, it's gonna be plus three feet. So a five foot berry hydrant is gonna be eight feet. A six foot berry is gonna be nine feet. Uh, so use that accordingly when you're determining which one you need. Bye.